I don't think she's there. May we bow. Lord, we do thank you for this day. We can't hear you, Margaret. You're on mute. I'm sorry, Reverend Tesford. Okay. <laughs> She's just a talking. <laughs> you on mute, Daffodil. She's still out here. I understand. Mm -mm. <laughs> okay, yes. am I muted now? Yes. yes. We can hear you. <laughs> okay. Got to now. All right. Well, all right. As long as I'm unmuted, I'm okay. 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 <clears throat> oh. I'm going to get it right. my place people sorry about that thank you thank you Amen. Amen. Okay. Thank you. Thank you so much. That's inspiring. It is. May we bow. Um, Lord, your truth is marching on. Now, Lord, we pray that in this hour of study together, your spirit meet us here and lead us with your truth into your truth. In Jesus' name, amen. Amen. As I said prior to 12 o'clock, we have a different uh, way of proceeding today in Bible study. Don't have the study questions to prompt our thinking. This is really meant as a follow-up to last week's uh, Black History Bible study. Um, I think perhaps we put a, I put a lot of emphasis on money last week. And this week, I, I want to, I want us to get a, a feel for some things I think everybody is already aware of, but I want us to feel it, <laughs> if that makes any sense. And so I have listed uh, several of the references in scripture to the land that we call Africa. And let me read, let me read the statement that has been prepared. 
Africa in the Bible. There are several random references to the continent now known as Africa in the Bible. Uh, if I were rewrite to edit this, I would say, however, however, according to Pulse Nigeria, that's a website I found, the name Africa was not used until the late 17th century to refer to the motherland. The ancient name was Alki Beulah. This is according to the World Atlas. Alki, according to the World Atlas, Alki Beulah translates to Mother of Mankind or the Garden of Eden. Sometimes our Bible says Cush, Libya, Ethiopia, Egypt, and there are other references to Africa. <laughs> now, just let's let's just pause there and, and 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 ponder on that for a minute. The name Africa is not an African name. Mm -hmm. The name Africa comes from Europeans. The name Africa came about only in the last few hundred years. Mm -hmm. So the name Africa does not appear in our Bibles because when the Bible was written, mm -hmm. that was not that was not that name was not being used to refer to the continent of Africa. But notice, uh, for the most part. There are no names of continents, well, not for the most part, but not in large part are the names of continents used, but more the names of nations or tribes. Uh, we see the name Asia being used in scripture, more, but more so in the New Testament than the Old Testament. And I think there is one reference to Europe in the New Testament, but I forget exactly where it is. I think it has to do with Paul's desire to, uh, to go to some parts of Europe he had not yet been to, but I confess I don't have that right on, my, on the tip of my mind now. Now, uh, we have a list of references used and no doubt we may very well may not get to look at all of these today, but just if you can just look at this, this list of references to Africa or, or, or things that happened in Africa. Uh, the first thing that, that can pop up just from looking at the list without even knowing what any of these verses or chapters or series of chapters say, or books say. <clears throat> uh, the first book of the Bible is what? Genesis. 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 Okay. Anybody ever heard the question, uh, are there black people in the Bible? Mm -hmm. Yes. Yeah, pretty. But now, Look at just this partial list. This is not a complete list. This is not a com this is a very incomplete list. Extremely incomplete list. Hmm. But look at these references in Genesis to Africa. Even the second story of creation refers to Africa. Genesis 2, 11 through 12, and Genesis 2 and 13 are part of the second creation story in scripture. Genesis 12, a, a great patriarch for the Hebrew people, Abraham, 
Genesis 12 begins with Abraham receiving the promise of God, the covenant. Abraham receives that promise at least three times in Genesis. And when the promise is first given to Abraham, Africa is mentioned, or rather Egypt is mentioned. Mm -hmm. Now, uh, this is a, a, an error in the typing because I, I did this rather, rather quickly. Um, I was running late this week. When you, if you skip down to Genesis 37, 36, you might remember from Sunday school, that's where the story of Joseph's being sold mm -hmm. to into slavery mm -hmm. in Egypt. Mm -hmm. Now, if even if we skip over some other references, I want us to, to, to spend some time with what begins in Genesis 37, 36, and goes all the way through to the end of the book of Genesis. Uh, Deacon Fulton, I don't remember off the top of my head how many chapters there are in the book of Genesis, but I think there are about 14 or 15 chapters where that occurs in, no, it's more than that, there are at least 16 or more chapters where the narrative happens in Africa in the book of Genesis. Mm -hmm. Plus those references in the book of Genesis that refer to Egypt outside of the Joseph story and outside of the Abraham story. <clears throat> and the entire book of Exodus the entire book of Exodus, Genesis is prominent in the entire book of Exodus because the Hebrew children, we don't even have to look in our Bibles to answer this question. The Hebrew children were in slavery in what country? Anybody? Egypt. In Egypt. 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 And Egypt is in what continent? Africa. 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 Now, this is a part of African history that we as African-Americans may not be proud of, but it's part of history and it's true and it's Bible. The first reference to slavery that I'm aware of in the Bible happens where? In Egypt. In Egypt. Egypt. In, Africa. in Africa. In Africa. In Africa. Yes, right. In Egypt, which is in Africa. Right. Yes. Now, why is that important? I think it's important in Black History Month for us to realize we have, Black people have not always been the victims in human history. Black people have, have been the ones on the top, the ones with the power. Black people, the civilization of black people did not begin in 1865. The civilization of black people did not begin when a few white people slipped and tried and to teach some slaves how to read. Civilization itself begins and Africa is civilized from ancient times. Okay, now, and then there are some other references, uh, one in Numbers, which is really part of the Exodus story, the book of Numbers. We got first, we have some references here that we included from first Kings, one from second Kings, References from Second Chronicles, and there are references in Psalms. There's another Old Testament reference that we listed in Isaiah. Uh, and there are, there, there are more than these. But I, I wanted to include these 
because the, the a variety of uh, 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 situations in these references. Perhaps the part of Bible reading that is difficult, may not be quite as difficult as Numbers and Leviticus, <laughs> but what is more difficult reading than just to sit down and read First and Second Kings and First and Second Chronicles? Anybody ever try to do that? A lot of people begin on their own, going to read the whole Bible from Genesis to Revelation. Uh -huh. Uh -huh. And get bogged down. Yeah. Uh -huh. yeah. Some of the yeah. Old Testament, especially uh, First and Second Kings, First and Second Chronicles. There's some gruesome stuff in there, isn't it? Mm -hmm. yeah. uh -huh. yep. It seems to be all about war. Yes. And people doing wrong. Now, one thing, but if uh, I, oh, okay, Sister Andre, your hand is up. Yes. Oh. Mm -hmm. Oh, okay. My question is Is the confusion, was the confusion caused when they tried to take Egypt out of Africa? and make it a whole different um, country or the mid, I forgot what they call it, but people thought- Middle East. East. Middle East, right. Middle East. As if that was still not a part of the continent of Africa. Why do you think they wanted to do that? Because of the wealth. Well, same thing you said before about not <laughs> accepting- <laughs> It's money. <laughs> yeah. And so yeah. Yeah. And, yeah. And they 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 were for the most part successful in that effort. Mm -hmm. For the most part, they have been successful in that effort. Now this is this is this is a personal confession. I heard it so much from authorities, from authorities, the authorities in my life as a child growing up. I was a college student before I realized Egypt is in Africa. Africa. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And I see the map. And mm -hmm. clearly on the map, Egypt is in Africa. Yes. Yes. But in, and let me tell you how what made it click in my mind. Mrs. Du Bois, W. E. B. Du Bois' widow, mm -hmm. came to Lincoln University to speak. And she, like many of the other speakers, received students after the event to just talk. And I, I stood up in the group of students standing around her. She was sitting in a chair. And she said something about Egypt. She and the late Dr. Du Bois, well, they're both late now, had traveled and had stayed in Egypt for a good while. She mentioned that, and then she and then she looked around and said, Y'all do know Egypt is in Africa, right? <laughs> yeah. <laughs> and although I knew it, I hadn't realized it. What a revelation. I did. I did. Well, good. Well, good for you. Good for you. I yeah. had not. It didn't. It didn't click for me. But it clicked mm -hmm. then when she said it. Mm -hmm. Now, you see what what I got in paragraphs on our list. Mm -hmm. And I, uh, I'm gonna go. Your question prompts me to back up to this. With the Book of Exodus, Sinai is in Egypt. Sinai is, is in Egypt. That includes the mountain. Mm -hmm. Mount Sinai, yep. Mount Sinai is in Egypt. It's still in mm -hmm. Egypt. Mm -hmm. <laughs> it ain't yeah. moved. The it Red Sea as well. That's, that's mm -hmm. right. That's right. But see, now, 
That's what yeah. happens when people choose attempt to rewrite history, like they are doing with this uh, right. taking books and all this now. When you decide that you want to rewrite history, you go write it so it's going to turn its light on you, because history is his story, and he go right. always tell his story, his story to make him mm -hmm. look good. Oh yeah, that's so that's all I got to say today. Oh, wait, you, 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 you said a mouthful. You said a mouthful. Now, <clears throat> the reason these references in Kings and Chronicles are so important that I wanted to list them, and I want everybody to have this partial list, uh, because when I looked for lists, this kind of list, I couldn't find one. I said, so I got it. I said, well, let me, there might be one, but I can't find it. So I'll just go make one up myself. I want everybody to have to refer to or refer to others to, or refer others to when, as they try to undergird their understanding of African people, African-Americans, African people. African-American history does not begin in Jamestown in 1619. Absolutely not. African American history goes back to the creation. African American African civilizations are just as ancient as any other ancient civilization. Mm -hmm. Not just ancient times, but ancient civilizations. And these reference, these Old Testament references undergird that understanding. Mm -hmm. uh, Kings, the Kings and Chronicles references, even if you don't get them to them specifically, they let us see how powerful, how much power there was in Africa. Power of nations, power of civilizations, military might. And there's some other references throughout scripture. Somehow or another, that got thrown out, uh, just like you said, uh, Sister Graham, that got mm -hmm. thrown out in Bible teaching in general. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. It got thrown out. Uh, I, I don't know if I it's, uh, called Shashak's name Sunday. I, I don't think I did. But if you want to look up a um, uh, a man who the Israelites were scared of in his time is Shishak. Uh, it was Hezekiah, I think, who was frightened just by the name of Shishak. Okay. Um, now, um, Let's refer, let, let's back up to Genesis. Uh, to Genesis 2, right quick. Genesis 2, okay. Genesis 2. Genesis 2. 2, okay. Um, and I'm. Genesis 2, 10 through 13. 10. Reverend Pettiford, while we're looking up that, how do you spell that shy shack? <laughs> um, I think, I think, sister, is spelled S H I. S H A K or Q. I'm, I forget. Okay. I, I put think a it's C spelled in both there. ways with a K and, and or with a Q. Oh, thank you. But if you put in anything close to that and pull it up. put a comma, Egypt, you'll find it. You'll find it. Okay. And he is in, and he's in your, if you have a complete concordance, he's in your concordance. Bible concordance. Uh, 
Would someone volunteer to read those verses starting at 10 going through 13? And uh, I got I have it. <clears throat> okay. And a river went out of Eden, giving water to the garden. And from there it was parted and became four streams. The name of the first is Pishon, which goes round about all the land of Havilah, where there is gold. Keep reading. Okay. Okay. And the gold of that land is good. There is Bedellium and the onyx stone. And the name of the second river is Gion. This river goes round all the land of Cush. Okay. Yeah, you, you have living Bible, don't you, Sister Jones? Yeah, yes. King James. I, I'm, I'm reading from my, from my uh, cellular phone. And this, this is the uh, basic English. Okay, basic English. Okay, good, good. Yeah, Cush is often used to refer either to Ethiopia or to Africa in some way in scripture. King James uses the name Ethiopia mm -hmm. in verse 13. Instead of Cush. Um, yeah, Cush is a name. It's yeah, not I've a difference, it before. it's just a name. It's just mm -hmm. a name. Mm -hmm. And depending, depending on translation and whichever language mm -hmm. is prominent uh, determines whether the translators would say Ethiopia or Kush. Mm -hmm. But whether you say Ethiopia or Kush, where is that? Africa. That's yeah. Africa. That's Africa. Mm -hmm. Now, the other two rivers listed are one, the third river is Hittikel in verse 14, and then also in verse 14 is the river you Euph the Euphrates. Euphrates. Now, where does that sound like to y'all? Africa. Africa. Yeah. Uh, Egypt. Egypt, anyway. The yeah. Tigris is over there, too. The Tigris, the Euphrates the Tigris, River. Tigris. Yes, the Tigris. source of civilization. Yeah. That's right. That's mm -hmm. right. <clears throat> Africa and up, and the Euphrates is over in Asia. Asia. Is that right? Yes. Sounds like it. So that's the area in, in which scripture is saying where the Garden of Eden was or is. Mm -hmm. So Africa is in scripture really in the creation story. <laughs> the creation like you, story. Said, you said it in the beginning. Yeah, it's in the creation story. In the beginning. We yeah. can see it in, Gen in yeah. Genesis. Yeah. Genesis 2 is, mm -hmm. is the creation story. Yeah. The second creation story. You've got the first creation story, and then you've got a second creation mm -hmm. story that starts at the fourth verse of chapter 2. So Havilah is mentioned. Kush, Ethiopia is mentioned before, before Adam and Eve are mentioned. Uh -huh. See that? Yeah. See that? Yeah. Mm -hmm. Okay, now, uh, I, I, now to me that's significant. To me, that's 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 significant, and that much of history that we were required to learn, and some of the answers that we might have been required to give in school were wrong answers and a wrong mm -hmm. understanding. Mm -hmm. I'm not mad at the teachers who taught that, because that's what they were taught. That's right. That's right. And they had to teach the books that they had. Yeah. Mm -hmm. And they had to learn out of the books that they had or we had. 
And that's what the books indicate. Slavery erased and destroyed a whole lot of education and a whole lot of culture. But thank God, it's just like the poet said, and Dr. King quoted that poem time after time. Truth, though crushed to the earth, shall rise again. Okay, with Abraham, Abraham and Sarah. Sisters, would you want to be married to somebody like Abraham? <laughs> Huh. I, I don't want him for a brother-in-law. <laughs> Not this Abraham. I don't want no brother. I don't want no man treat my sister like this. <laughs> You're familiar with how, what Abraham did when he and he and Sarah went to Egypt, right? Yeah. Ignore us. You remember, us. You, you remember the story? Yeah. It's not a pretty story. No. It's not no. a pretty story. No. Now, one thing I admire yes, about the right. Hebrew people and about the Jews, even the Jews who are not practicing Jews and who, who, who don't live out their, 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 their inherited faith, one thing I admire about them, they own up to their history. Yes. The Old Testament is the most honest history family history, the most honest history I have ever found written by that, their own people. When we write obituaries for our departed family members, we write the highlights of their life. Nobody ever writes their mama's obituary and says, my mama was a mean woman. <laughs> you write the highlights of their life. The Hebrew people, yes, inspired by God, but have written and assembled a very honest history of their ancestors. Abram, uh, our, verse our verse passage starts with 10. And there was a famine in the land, and Abram went down into Egypt to sojourn there, for the famine was grievous in the land. And it came to pass when he was come near into Egypt that he said unto Sarah, his wife, Behold now, I know that thou art a fair woman to look upon. Therefore it shall come to pass when the Egyptians shall see thee that they shall say, this is his wife, and they will kill me, but they will save thee alive. Say, I pray thee, thou art my sister, that it may be well with me for thy sake, and my soul shall live because of thee. And it came to pass that when Abram was coming to Egypt, the Egyptians beheld the woman, that she was very fair. The princess also of Pharaoh saw her and commended her before Pharaoh that the woman was taken into Pharaoh's house. And he entreated Abram well for her sake. And he had sheep and oxen and he asses and men servants and maid servants and she asses and camels. And the Lord plagued Pharaoh and his house with great plagues because of Sarai, Abram's wife. And Pharaoh called Abram and said, What is this that thou hast done unto me? Why didst thou not tell me that she was thy wife? Why saidest thou she is my sister? So I might have taken her to me to wife. Now therefore behold thy wife, Take her and go thy way. Don't skip over the next verse. And Pharaoh commanded his men concerning him, and they sent him away 
and his wife and all that he had. Don't skip over the next verse. The next two verses. And Abram went up out of Egypt, he and his wife and all that he had and lot with him into the south. And Abram was very rich in cattle, in silver and in gold. What's the significance of all these verses, y'all? That Pettiford wants everybody to see, take a good look up and have at hand in your reference about scripture. If Abram was rich, rich, yeah, they were rich already. Why does the Bible wait till chapter 13 to say he's rich? Who made Abram rich? Okay. Who? Pharaoh. Pharaoh. Until <laughs> now, here I'm gonna, push, I'm gonna push it a little bit, y'all. I'm going out on that. As I read scripture, as I read scripture, the Jews are rich because Africa made them rich. Made them. He was already rich. Not only that, he became richer. He can't be that. Not only that, he became richer. Not only that. Not only that, there was no Jewish civilization. All you had, all they, all it was, was Abram. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And Sarah. What's that? He, he was a wanderer. Abram was a wanderer. That's, he was a wanderer. Egypt was civilized. Mm hmm they had a civilization, they had government, they had a pharaoh, the princes of pharaoh, saw Sarai and brought Sarai to pharaoh. When pharaoh saw her, he took her to be his wife. Mm -hmm. The plagues came from God. Notice what the Bible does not say. It's written between the lines. How did Pharaoh find out that Sarai was Abram's wife? Somebody told him. Somebody told him. Somebody huh? said it. Somebody told him. I think somebody told him. Who? Could have been uh, lot. God probably told him, don't who? mess. Who, no, who did you say? Who did you lot. say? Lot. Lot. You say lot? Does Could the Bible, been. what does what does scripture say? Because they uh, quarreled. What does scripture like say? Figured out himself. Well, I, 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 I remember reading that, but I don't, uh, you know. You don't see it there, though, do you? No. Uh -uh. I don't about, I don't about in the scripture. Right. Mm, what does no. the scripture say? Now, it says when the palace officials saw her. So that was somebody in Pharaoh's. They, uh, they saw, saw was, her. Yeah, I knew they it. saw her. If they thought Abram had said, if they find out we are married, they'll kill me when they see you. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. They didn't mm -hmm. kill him. No. That's right. How did Pharaoh find out the they truth? Scripture does not say, y'all. No, it doesn't I say. Y'all got to see. Is it because see, see. of the uh, pain he was inflicted? That was a trick question. Yes. Uh, it was a trick question, really. Yes. Yeah, insight. That was a trick question. I thought it had insight. Scripture does not say. Yes. <laughs> we were trying to make it. For it. Now, the new living say. Uh, when Abram arrived in Egypt, everyone noticed Sarah beauty. When the palace officials saw her, they sang her praises to Pharaoh, their king, and Sarah was taken into his place, his palace. So, mm -hmm. so the officials saw her. Yeah. His people that worked for him. Mm -hmm. They didn't know who she was, did they? No. 
whether he was the okay. whether okay. she was well, 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 well y'all let right now it's just me and boo me and sister boo <laughs> Let's say Sister Boo. I don't want anybody to misunderstand. That's okay. That's okay. Call me anyway. So no problem. Sister Boo. Uh -huh. Sister Boo. They saw her. Uh huh. And they carried her to the king. To Pharaoh. Yes. What did the king do? He, he gave did. Abram's gifts because of her. Okay. Well, now let's go back to the let's go back to the scripture. Did you think uh, she she told him no, that no, this is me and this is me and Sister Boo? Okay, okay sorry no, about well, that. Sorry, now we read the New Living. You know, this is okay. what. Read, what read, it, read it, read okay. it, read it. Let me go from the beginning. No, okay. just start right where you were. Okay. Um, when Abraham Abraham arrived in Egypt, everyone noticed Sarah's beauty. When the palace officials saw her, they sang her praises to Pharaoh, their king, and Sarah was taken into his palace. When Pharaoh gave, well, this tells why he gave gifts to Abraham, you know. No, no, just read it, read it. Then Pharaoh gave Abraham many gifts because of her, sheep, goats, cattle, male and female donkeys, male and female servants and camels. Keep reading. Okay, but the Lord sent terrible plagues against Pharaoh and his household became of Sarah because of Sarah, Abraham's wife. Keep reading. So Pharaoh summoned Abraham and accused him sharply. What have you done to me? He demanded. Mm -hmm. Tell me, why didn't you tell me she was your wife? He didn't know. Why didn't you say she's your, my sister and allow me to take her as my wife? Now then, here is your wife. Take her and get out of here. Yeah. They ordered some of his men to escort them and sent Abraham out of the country along with his wife and all of his possessions. Yeah. See what the scripture says, Sister, Sister Jackie? Uh -huh. Pharaoh yeah. did not know. Yeah. Pharaoh yeah. finds out when the plagues, God sent yeah. the plagues. Right. That's, That's what the scripture Lord. says. That's the Lord. Uh -huh. Pharaoh confronts Abram. Now you follow me along. See if I'm 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 reading it right. You're right. Yeah. Pharaoh confronts Abram. You didn't tell me this was your wife. Your wife. Yeah. You say what? You, you told me? me I would not have taken her. Now look. Now this is this is the the African pride in me pointing this out. It's something I haven't seen pointed out in Sunday school literature through the years. And I haven't seen it pointed out in a commentary. It might be in a commentary by now. See what, see Pharaoh's God consciousness. Pharaoh is aware of God. I'm not saying Pharaoh was Jew. He wasn't a Jew. I'm not saying he was a Christian. Nobody was a Christian in Genesis. But Pharaoh finds out. Now, whether it was by somebody told him, he links it together. I have somebody else's wife. Not only does he give the woman back, he gives, he makes Abram and Sarah rich. Mm -hmm. I have a question. Yes. And maybe but, I missed maybe I missed this in the very beginning, but why were they gonna kill Abram because Sarah was pretty, was beautiful? To take Sarah? To take her. From just him. to take just to take her because she was beautiful. Yes. Mm -hmm. 
That's what that's that's what Abe that's what Abram predicted. Now what, whether what they he, whether yeah, they would have left her alone or not, whether Abram was correct or not, that's that's a that would be a good discussion. But scripture doesn't say that that's what they would have done. Scripture just quotes Abram as telling his wife that's what they'll do. Well, I was wondering if it was because she looked different, like he did he didn't deserve to have a wife. Now that's a good question. You bring up a good question. You bring up a good question. King James uses the word fair. Right. Uh, which is a it has double meaning. Fair is used in old English to indicate beauty, and it's also used in our uh form of english to indicate light skin light skin i was wondering so you know, i don't I know i really yeah. don't I, okay. I, I i'll just be honest with you i don't know uh, okay that just popped into my mind you yeah know? but if she was an ugly I mean, woman Caroline, I thought we wouldn't have had no concern well ben Pedico, i thought the and same all, thing all just because you're light skin don't mean you're pretty that's right that's right amen <laughs> Uh -huh. Well, because most of the women back then were, they were, uh, they had tans, you know, they were, they weren't dark, dark, but they, but, were you know, dark. but I, uh, permit me, permit me to be able to say this. There's some things we don't know. Yeah, yeah, yeah. It's just uh -huh. what you want to think about. Yeah. There's some, because the Bible is not given to us to answer our questions. Amen. The Bible uh -huh. is given to us so we can answer God's question. <laughs> mm -hmm. But at the same time, there is an awful lot of information in Scripture for us because it gives us a, a window to see into the ancient world. Uh huh. Mm -hmm. Reverend Pettiford. Yes. He was covering himself as well. You know how we have to sometimes when we go into certain uh, situations, mm -hmm. we want to know, want to be able to come out of the situation. <laughs> that's so right. he did because what he thought he needed to do. That's to right. To protect right. himself. They, 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 are, they are traveling south and go as far as Egypt because there's a famine in the land. They are, they're not on a, they're not, this is not a pleasure trip. They're trying to survive. They want to do something before it's too late. Because once you starve, there ain't nothing you can do. They're looking at, both he and Sarah are looking ahead. They're trying to survive. And, but at the same time, it doesn't make Abram look good. <laughs> what would you have done, ladies, if your husband had done what Abram did. I would have gotten mad. I think it's hard to say what I would do because of the way we're living now. But back then, the man was the head of the household, and without a man, or a husband, or a son. A woman was, you know, out of her elements. She didn't have any control over herself or anything else. There is that. 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 Is this something? Is this, is this something similar to what happened in slavery? You know, the guy from the big house could walk down to the what? The slave quarters okay, and take a woman. <laughs> tell the husband take a walk. Mm -hmm. You know, and you that's know right. Take, that's take right. a walk. You know what's going on, but he and the woman get back together. They were surviving. Mm -hmm. They were surviving. So I say they were strong. Some people talking about they're weak. Mm. They wouldn't have done it. No, well, you know, they survived. Yeah, and they understood the culture they just was in. So that was a way of surviving. They could even yeah. send him to another plantation or kill him if he didn't comply. Yes, the yeah. husband yeah. or the. Yeah. But the women in those days didn't have a voice. They were almost considered as property. Yeah. This is another this is another example of their circumstance being far different than our mm -hmm. circumstance. Just like 
the circumstance of our ancestors two, three, four, five hundred years ago, completely different from our circumstance. But what scripture, what scripture gives us is that 3,000 years ago, the circumstance was flipped. And here we, here we have Abram and Sarah at the mercy of Africans for their very life. Mm -hmm. And because Remember. of the mercy and grace of the Pharaoh, no, he was Abram gets his wife back. Mm -hmm. Now God had something to do with it. Yeah. Mm -hmm. God had a whole lot to do with it because the plague That's came. The plague came and then Pharaoh says to Abram, why didn't you tell me this was your wife? Scripture does not tell us who told Pharaoh. Yeah. Now, let me tell you who I think told Pharaoh. <laughs> I think God told Pharaoh. Yes. I do too. Okay. Yeah. I said that. That's what I said. Yes. Yeah, I, think, yes I thought well, I heard you say that, I but I, I didn't hear uh -huh. it. I certainly did. I believe God told Pharaoh. I think that's who told him to. Looking at it this way, do you see the significant role Africa plays hey, yes. into mm -hmm. the birth of the Abrahamic family, mm -hmm. the family of Israel, and ultimately the nation of Israel? And the fact in chapter 13, Abram is called a rich man. Mm -hmm. In chapter 12, he's hungry. Mm -hmm. So desperate that he says to his wife, you don't, don't tell him we're married. Mm -hmm. Let him think you're my sister. Mm -hmm. So I can live and it will be well with us. Now that's that's a desperate circumstance. You go from that circumstance to coming into chapter 13 being rich. Now give Abram Abram credit. Not only did he get this, was it was it gold? Yes. Mm -hmm. What else? Camel and silver. Camel, gold and silver. Donkeys. 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 All kinds of animals. Now, if you have a King James. Right. If you Camels. have a King James. And I purposely and servants James and servants, male and female servants, mm -hmm. male and me female servants, servants, yes. right? Mm -hmm. So, the darker peoples of the world have been on top. Mm -hmm. Okay, now, uh, mm -hmm. let me look at the time. I oh, it's time mm -hmm. is getting close. <laughs> Um, who had asked about how to spell Shashak? I found it. You I found, found it too. Yeah, yeah, I have an old Bible, uh, today's dictionary of the Bible. Okay, okay. Oh. Okay, you wanted me to spell it for you? Yes. No, no, that's okay. Okay. <laughs> no. I'll talk to Andrea. Because I'm oh. sorry, though. I yes, 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 yes. <laughs> I'm sorry. Y'all do that after Bible study. Okay. okay. Time, time, is, time, is, time is fleeing. And there's uh, something I want us to all look at together. Uh, it's in Kings. And I'm... This is Roman numerals, and I'm a little slow with Roman numerals. But here it is. Second Kings 19. This, everybody's heard of King Hezekiah, right? Hezekiah, yeah. yeah. Uh -huh. Hezekiah was a good king. Mm -hmm. Hezekiah was a good king. Um because time is so short, let's let's go directly to verse nine. Let's 
2 Kings chapter 19, verse 9. And now, this is one of those references that shows us an immense amount of power in Africa. And when he heard say of Terhaka, king of Ethiopia, behold, he is come out to fight against thee. He sent messengers again, again unto Hezekiah, saying, Thus shall you speak to Hezekiah, king of Judah, saying, Let not, now this is a message, the message is not coming from Ethiopia, the message is coming from Assyria. This is international diplomacy and intrigue and international nation relations. Assyria is trying to influence Judah. Okay. Thus shall you speak to Hezekiah, king of Judah, saying, let not thy God in whom thou trustest deceive thee, saying, Jerusalem shall not be delivered into the hand of the king of Assyria. Everybody know this is not a message coming from God, right? Mm -hmm. yeah. It's a message coming from Assyria. Because the message says, don't trust God. Mm -hmm. Isn't that what it said? Yes. Y'all see it? Yes. Okay, I don't want to run over nobody now. <laughs> Behold, <laughs> thou hast heard what the kings of Assyria have done unto the lands. And it goes on and on and on. Um, Is it 19 I want or is it 18? Uh, I apologize, y'all. Sometimes I get too excited and I go too fast for my own book. He took the letter to the altar, didn't he? And prayed over it. Well, I'm looking for Shasha. Oh, okay. Pardon me. I, this is so important, but pardon me. I, 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 perhaps what I'm looking for is in Second Chronicles. This is why I'm so slow. Because when I get in a hurry and go fast, I outrun my brain. Mm -hmm. but when you're not in your brain, you're not in your right mind. Second Chronicles chapter 12, 2 through 9. This is what I'm looking for. And it's not Hezekiah, it's Solomon dealing with uh, some of Solomon's problems. Okay, you had to spell yeah. right. Yeah. Okay. okay. King Shashak of Egypt. Verse 2. And it came to pass that in the fifth year of Rehoboam, Shashak, king of Egypt, came up against Jerusalem. Now, in the King James, this part is in parentheses because they had transgressed against the Lord. You see that? Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. What that means? God allowed Egypt to come up against Rehoboam. Mm -hmm. Because we are born and God's people had messed up. This is one of the things, this is one of the, 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 the complications in uh, Kings and Chronicles that makes it kind of hard to follow sometimes. 
and, and, and the prophets too, the major prophets too, God would use foreign powers to chastise the people, to bring them back to belief, to bring them back to following him, to bring them back to obedience. But Shishak, the name Shishak struck fear into, other, into the other peoples. That's how powerful Shishak is. Now, verse three, the 1,200 chariots, three score hundred thousand horsemen, three, three score thousand rather, three score thousand horsemen, and the people were without number that came with him out of Egypt. The Lubins, and I think uh, I think the spelling is really the Libyans, the Sukims, and the Ethiopians. And he took the fenced cities which pertained to Judah and came to Jerusalem. Verse five, then came Shemaiah the prophet to Rehoboam, and to the princes of Judah that were gathered together to Jerusalem because of Shishak, and said unto them, Thus saith the Lord, ye have forsaken me, and therefore have I also left you in the hand of Shishak. Shishak was bad. <laughs> <laughs> Mm -hmm. Just think from a political point of view, what kind mm -hmm. of political power and military power Shishak had to bring the retinue that's mentioned in verse three up to Judah. Three score, which means three score is how many? 60. 60,000 horsemen. And the people were without number that came with him out of Egypt, Shashak reigns in Egypt, the, Luk, the Libyans, the Sukims, and the Ethiopians. What kind of power is that? A whole lot. That's a whole lot of power. Mm -hmm. His power, his military power, his reach, his influence, whatever you want to call it, his domain, his reign was not mm -hmm. just in Cairo, not just in what we know as Egypt, but throughout North Africa and East Africa. Y'all remember Muammar Mo Gaddafi? Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Libya. Mm -hmm. Yeah, Libya. Libya, in my guess, is hundreds of miles, maybe even close to a thousand miles away from Jerusalem. Certainly away from Ethiopia, parts of Ethiopia anyway. And by the way, all of the Libyans are not Arab people. There are black Africans Africa. in Libya uh -huh. as well, as well as Egypt too. Remember Sadat? <laughs> Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Uh, I realized this was an unusual Bible study and uh, but I, I just wanted to undergird our appreciation of Africa in the Bible uh, and I, this was not systematic as it could have been but it would take me years to organize a systematic Bible study of Africa in scripture, if not longer than that, because you're really talking about the whole, all 66 books to some extent or another. Because even when you get to Babylonian dominate, domination of the Babylonian empire, you're still talking about Africa because it stretches at some points all the way to Egypt. Any comments or questions as we close? 
great great teaching round pedophore enjoy you. that <laughs> thank you sister wakefall mm -hmm. very my interesting. comment is that you just keep bringing more and more and uh, you can't get enough <laughs> Amen. Amen. <laughs> Very Thank interesting. Thank you so much. Thank you so Thank much. You. I, I appreciate those kind words. Uh, anybody love Proverbs, the book of Proverbs? Uh -uh. If you do, if you do, take 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 note of this note on our sheets about Proverbs. Uh, okay. This is one of those things, Sister Tatum. That when you go to the blacks, when you went to the black seminary back in the day, 50 years ago, you would get warned to be careful about bringing home to your church. Because it has to do with uh, stuff that most of us have not been comfortable talking about in the church. Um, and we, and I don't even like to put too much emphasis on it, but given our study of black history in February this year, I felt like uh, I better hurry up and start talking about stuff like this if I'm gonna do it. Amen, thank you. Reverend <laughs> Pettifor? Yes. I forgot it was Mrs. Hill's birthday. Hmm? It's Sherlane Hill's birthday. Today? Happy birthday, Sherlane. Happy birthday, Sherlane. I knew Thank you. Thank you. Birthday. Happy birthday, Happy birthday to you. Happy birthday. Thank you. And have a blessed and wonderful day. Yes. yes. Thank you. Uh, uh, Sister Davis called me yesterday, Veronica. Her surgery schedule for yesterday was postponed because the surgeon had an emergency surgery. And she said, well, in that case, don't try to do it today. We do it another time. <laughs> I don't blame her. <laughs> I really don't. Yeah. No fun going so on let's another night. get to pray for her in her sojourn with her uh, eyes and her health, as well as the other prayer concerns we have. Deacon Fulton, would you pray us out? Let's pray. Heavenly yeah. Father, we thank you for this oh, opportunity you. that you've granted us to come to your throne of grace. And grace. Thank you for this day and all the blessings that you have bestowed upon each of us. Thank you for waking us up this morning and setting us on our way. Heavenly Father, we thank you for this branch of Zion called First Baptist. Heavenly Father, we just ask that you would touch the bodies of those in our congregation that's going through certain health issues and bereavement. Heavenly Father, just ask your special blessing upon Sister Davis as she await for her operation. Heavenly Father, just to ask you guide us and direct us and continue to keep us in the palm of your hand. Heavenly Father, we thank you for this opportunity that you granted us to come on another Wednesday to study your word. Thank you for Reverend Peter for it, for yes. being so kind and generous to us to yes. talk to us about our history. Thank yes. you for this information. Yes. Pray that each of us was inspired enough to continue to dig deeper, Heavenly Father, and share with others. Heavenly Father, as we go through that today, ask that you bless us and keep us in your pr our prayers, dear God, for our meeting tonight, as we come together as a congregation to voice concerns about our future. And Kevin Father, just thank you. Thank you. Thank you. These are another blessing of actually your son in Jesus' name. We pray. Amen. 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 Happy birthday, Shirley. Thank you, too. Yes. <laughs> no, it's somebody's birthday today. Everybody stay safe. Thank you. Amen. You do stay safe. safe.